In this video, this will be another queuing example. And again, the uh, formulas for queuing are on page 141 of our book. And um, that's pretty much what you need to know. Um, so in the other example, I had a different arrival, right? Let's say that um, customers arrive at a rate of 60 per hour and that we can process them at a rate of 80 per hour. This gives us a utilization row of 60 divided by 80, which is of course, three quarters or point, point 0.75. So we are busy 75% of the time, and on average, we have 0.75 people actually standing there at the uh, customer service window. If you were at the at the counter being served by the person, um, in this video, I'm going to compute the probability of having nobody or person or two people or three people, etc. So um, the probability of that nobody is here is 1 minus lambda divided by mu. So the probability that no one is here is 1 minus lambda divided by mu. Well, you remember that rho, that was lambda divided by mu. So another way to write this is just to say this is 1 minus rho. So for our example here, the probability that there is no one here is 25, 0.25, 25%. 25% 25 of the time, there's nobody here, which makes sense if you think about it. On average, we're busy 75% of the time. So if we're only busy 75% of the time, it must mean that 25% of the time we're not busy, which means there's nobody here. So the probability that we have one person in the system, let's go back to that um, spreadsheet here, it's at the sorry, PowerPoint, and see that finally the probability of having n people is equal to p0 times lambda divided by mu again. So let's write this in general. Probability of having n people is the probability of zero people times lambda divided by mu raised to the nth power or another way to write that is p0 times rho raised to the nth power. So if we want to know the probability that we have one person in the system, it's p0 times rho raised to the first, first power. So p0, we just figured out, was 0.25. And then we multiply that by rho. And uh, let's see here, let's, let's highlight rho. Rho is 0.75. So the probability of one person is 0.25 times rho, which is 0.75. All right, so get out your calculator. 0.25 times 0.75 is 0.1875. 0 0.1875. So 25% of the time, we have nobody here. How often do we have one person and only one person? Well, we have exactly one person here about 19% of the time. Um, well, so let's see what probably what percentage of the time do we have two people? Well, so that's p zero times rho squared. So that is 0.25 times, and then remember your good old friend. Please excuse my dear aunt Sally. This is 0.75. This part squared multiplied by the 0.25. So 0.25 times 0.75 squared, um, or you could and, uh, 
So the probability of having exactly two people is 0 0.014625. I'm just going to round this as 14.1%. So 14.1% we have exactly two people. Okay, we could keep doing this all day, obviously. Um, I'm not going to do it all day, but just to make sure we've got it, if we're going to do three people, the probability of having exactly three people is 0 0.25, 0 0.0 times 0.75, that quantity cubed. So that's 0 0.141, 0 0.141, 0 0.141 times 0 0.75, which gives us. 10.6, let's call it. One zero five seven five. So, just to make a little table here. So the number of people we're talking about, zero people, the probability of exactly having however many people we're talking about, the prob ha probability of having nobody is 0.25. The probability of having one person, and exactly one person, is, well, let's see, let's just call it 0.19. I'm just going to round it all to the closest percent. The probability of having two people is 0 0.14. The probability of having three people is 0.11. So you can see it's, it's getting smaller and smaller. Um, so another thing we could figure out if we've done that for a few um, years. So the probability of having less than or equal to a given number. Um, so the probability of having zero or less, well, we can only have zero, we can't have less. So zero or less, there's a 25% chance we have zero people or less. The only way we could have one person or less would be to have one person or zero people. So we are going to take 0.25 plus 0.19 and get 0.44. So 44% of the time we have one person or less. And if we take, let's see here, just so you can see. Um, so to get the 0.44, um, I took the 0.19. Yeah, it's supposed to be red. Take the 0.19 and add it onto that, and that gave me the 0.44. So if the probability of having two people or less, well, the probability of having one person or less is four. So the only thing I need to add on is, well, if I had two people, um, so take 0.14 and 0.44, and we get the 58% chance that we have two people or less. The other way you could do that is just simply add up these three numbers and those add up to 0.58. The probability that we could have three people or less, well I'll just take the probability, we could add these all up uh, if you want to do it that way. So 69% of the time we have three people or less. Let me see we can keep going with this. Um, just for fun, and you think, yeah, you have a strange idea of fun. Um, the probability of having exactly four people is 0 0.25 times 0 0.75 raised to the fourth power. So that is 0 0.106. 106 times 0.75, which is 0 0.0795. 0.0795, which is basically 8%. So the probability of having four people is 0 0.08. The probability of having four people or less, we'll take the probability of three or less and add on that 8%. So we are at 77. So 77% of the time we have three people or less in our system. So if you think about the way I've, I've drawn these, um, the, the, the usual way people draw these things. Um, so 
if we talk about the probability of having total number of people in our system, um, we have uh, we have less than or equal to four people. Um, that probability is 77. So what are the odds that we have more than that? The probability that we have more than four people? Well, it's one minus 0.77. So 23% of the time, we have more than four people. Uh, just an interesting thing we can do with the numbers. So there is an example of what we can do when we go to calculate the number of people in our system.